Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a very warm welcome for me to the British Retail Consortium annual dinner. Uh, and it's a particular pleasure to see you all here this evening in this beautiful historic building. I hope you agree. As the video a moment ago highlighted, the theme tonight is the changing face of retail. So I'm just going to take a few moments to reflect on change in retail, the business we do, and on how we do it. Now, the development of retail over recent decades is very well documented. The growth of out-of-town and retail parks, the, the move of supermarkets into non-food and financial services, the expansion of clothing brands into footwear and accessories, and more recently, homewares and furnishing, the very recent and exponential growth of the digital retail world, and the even more recent spate of mergers and acquisitions. That said, what retail will look like five years from now is very hard to predict with any great certainty. But ensuring that wherever our customers are and whatever they're buying, searching, browsing, comparing, choosing, paying, receiving and returning, that that will be easy, convenient, seamless, are all taken as read. But I fear that traditional retailers who don't plan to compete by enhancing the quality customer experience simply won't compete. Take this example. A weekend or so ago, I went to my local supermarket. I had a long shopping list as we had friends over on the Saturday evening for dinner. I parked in the car park, swapped a pound for a trolley and wandered in. 20 minutes later, I was unloading a very full trolley onto the self-service checkout belt. The bill came to nearly 200 pounds, which I paid. I added the points to my loyalty card, repacked all the groceries, and walked back to the car to unload the shopping and return the trolley. And as I got back into the car, I reflected that I'd spent a great deal of money and had interacted with no one. Why wouldn't I do this all online next time and save myself all that hassle? I'm afraid that despite being easy and efficient, it was an unrewarding experience at a human level. So what's to be done? Well, of course, there's much to be done, but like many things in retail, it all starts in store, and perhaps with a rethink in the role of the store manager. We must make the in-store experience human and personal, especially for our most loyal, most frequent, and most important customers. However, if you look at today's role of the store manager, it's dominated by operations. In fact, there's the accolade, they are great operators. Wage control and rostering, deliveries and replenishment, stock control, waste markdowns. He or she is virtually invisible to customers in the majority of stores these days. Surely that has to change in the face of online competition. Now, I'm sure that in the near future, AI will do many of those tasks if computers aren't already doing them. So surely the store manager has to come back to the front of the house to meet and greet customers, engage with them around the store, serve them at the checkouts, and most important, thank them for their business. Just acknowledging customers and thanking them would make such a difference, quite apart from the improvement in sales that they would make if they really got to know their customers once more. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but I believe in an era when people can order just about anything over their phone, they will still go out if the experience is interesting, enjoyable, and engaging. Fashion shows, wine tasting, tech demos, there are endless ways to entice your customers, amuse them, and make money at the same time. We know a mobile phone can offer you more choice, lower prices, potentially greater speed and convenience than many stores, but currently a relatively empty experience. But creating those experiences will take a different mindset, a reallocation of resources and priorities. Growth in the old way by entering adjacent categories or adding space or acquiring competitors may only postpone the day of reckoning. 
or ultimately be a potential distraction in the far more important task of reinventing how any traditional retail business trades in the 21st century. I wish I didn't have to say this, but in my opinion, re the retail sector faces a very difficult next five years as we work our way through Brexit and many other significant and almost once in a generation changes. There is talk of, dis of declining disposable income and there is certainly the growth of home delivery channels, which is driving negative like for like in many retail outlets. We're all experiencing margin pressure from inflation and FX changes. And in our cost lines, we're coping with politically driven, in many cases, cost inflation through the national minimum wage, business rates, and the apprenticeship levy. This potentially crippling confluence of forces is going to lead to closures of independent stores, and chain retail stores will be looking at the tail of their estate which once was making decent contributions, but you take those forces and roll them through a few years, and those contributions of four or 5% at the poorest store end will go negative, with the then subsequent consequence that tens of thousands of customer-facing jobs may be lost, and there will even be some ghost towns created in secondary towns around the country, unless we act now. At the BRC, we have three priority political campaigns that remain critical to our industry. The first is no surprise, that's Brexit. This subject is moving on a daily basis beneath our feet. And our position of putting consumers at the heart of our plans with frictionless trade and no new tariffs, we believe is exactly the right position to be taking for retail. On business rates, there has been small movement but regrettably, government still hasn't found a politically acceptable answer to the problems of raising that sort of tax in a more imaginative way. But it doesn't mean we won't stop and we will continue to campaign very actively on this subject. And finally, the third subject that was work led by Charlie, my predecessor, Retail 2020 and Better Jobs. This takes me full circle to the business we do on how we do it. The backdrop I've described makes it more critical than ever for the BRC to help us build on what the industry already does well, but to come together and make our whole industry better. Helen will just touch on this in a moment. And finally, before I wrap up, uh, I have an important announcement to make. Well, I think the grocer stole my thunder earlier in the day, despite this being embargoed till nine o'clock, but there we are, it's a new world we live in of real-time news. But I'm delighted to tell you that Richard Pennycook has agreed to be my successor as chairman of the BRC taking over in 2018. That's very nice spontaneous applause. Thank you everybody. Um, Richard is an outstanding uh, fellow. He's uh, probably most well known recently as the chairman of the co-op but also prior to that was Chief Financial Officer at Morrison's through their turnaround period uh, and has vast retail experience prior to that. So obviously I'd like to offer my warm congratulations, Richard, to that round of applause that you've just received. And finally, finally, I'd like to finish by giving my thanks to all of the members of the BRC who've worked so hard on our campaigns, on our educative exercises, on our events program over the last 12 months, many of whom are here tonight. So thank you all very much. And my final thanks, uh, and very important thanks, are to our premium partners who have uh, helped fund this evening's lovely occasion, PayPal and the Retail Trust. We're very grateful for your support. So everybody, enjoy the evening, enjoy the opportunity to catch up with friends, enjoy the debate, and thank you once again for coming. <laughs>